The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Krohn Conservatory. There's always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phipps, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared on the William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. The William Pace Show, asking the questions you want to ask. Getting the answers everyone wants to know, it's a new season of the William Pace Show. We're raising the bar with more commitment to educate, inform, encourage, inspire, empower, and help you have your best life. Everyone deserves to have their best life. I'm just staying the course. Here we go. Good evening, I'm William Pace, and thanks so much for tuning in the William Pace Show. My guest this evening is Carmen Jackson. She's with the Grief to Grace program. Good to have you on the program tonight. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's interesting to know that organizations when they come into existence always take someone who has uh, had a problem mm -hmm. of some kind so what made you decide to start Grief to Grace? Grief to Grace was birthed after the death of my son. He had been missing for 14 and a half months. Mm. And um, after the 14 and a half months, I was notified um, that he was deceased. And for about a year and a half, because this was in 2000, he was missing in 2007 and he was, um, found, well, I guess he was found shortly thereafter, but we were notified in 2008. And so in 2009, I was in so much pain from the, the loss, the loss, the grief was really, 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 really hard for me. Uh, I really didn't know if I was going to stay in my right mind or not. It was very hard. And so um, I cried out to God through all of that pain. Mm -hmm. and. One day, one Friday, I was just sitting in the salon and the still voice said within me to start a support group for mothers who have lost children. Wow. And so I heard that voice very loud and clear. I heard it very loud and clear. And one of the things that I do know about life and pain and suffering and grief is that um, one of the greatest ways to overcome is to reach out and try to help others. Absolutely, because when you reach out to someone else in need, it takes your mind off of the burdens that you have, okay. and you have sort of a, a, a respite. You, don't, you never forget it, you right. know, but your mind is, is away from the intensity of what you're feeling That's in the true. moment. And so from that loss, you decided to start Grief to Grace. Yes. Okay. We didn't have a name at the time. How did you come up with the name? <laughs> well, the late Anthony Taylor, mm -hmm. who just passed away a little bit over a year ago. He's my brother-in-law. He's married to my sister. I see. And. Um, he actually came up with the name. Mm. And she brought it to us because she was a part of the support group. She had endured several losses herself, her mom, which was my stepmom. Mm -hmm. And he um, gave us the name and I took it to the members and everybody loved it. It has a, it has a everybody nice loved it. Uh, ring to it. Mm -hmm. Grief to grace. Grief to grace. So, do you have a lot of people that you receive phone calls from? Uh, not a lot of people, but we receive phone calls. I receive phone calls mm -hmm. quite often, but not a lot. 
And a lot of times when people contact me, they're interested in being a part of the, the support group. But when it comes actually, actually, when the time actually comes for them to participate, the participation is very low. And keep in mind that a lot of parents that have lost children, their children have been murdered. Not all parents, but a lot of parents. And I think that there's a sense of feeling unsafe sometimes in those situations. Mm -hmm. So our first meeting, we had 17 mothers in my living room. So this started Who had lost right, a child. Wow, this started right in your In home. my living room. Wow. 17 mothers, our very first meeting, and every woman that was there had lost a child. Mm-hmm. And so... You said there were 17 there. Mm-hmm. And I guess each one was grieving in a different way. They were... All of us were gr was grieving the loss of our child. Right. But the loss wasn't the same. It, they all wasn't... Meant. Yeah, they were... They all wasn't murder. Mm -hmm. It was uh, different ways of... of passing on, you know. Mm -hmm. Some was murder, car accident, sickness, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, the loss of a child. Uh, the loss is a loss. A you child, can't. yeah. Right. But a loss is a loss. And we did come to understand that, and that's part of the reason why we didn't focus totally on violence, because there are so many other ways that people lose children, you know, the, or, or loved ones, or loved ones, period. Right. And Many times, children just disown their parents, mm -hmm. and there's a loss there, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that when you birth a child mm -hmm. and the child doesn't want to have anything to do with mm -hmm. you, that's a loss, it too, is. you know. And it is. So there's different forms of, of, of loss, and it's, I guess, important to know how to process mm -hmm. that. and. Let's talk about the different stages of, of, of grief, the various categories of that. The first stage of grief is anger. And it's really not uncommon or unusual for anyone who loses a loved one to get angry. Um, the second one is depression. Um, when you're in that deep, deep grief, it's easy to draw back and withdraw from people. Mm -hmm. And wanna, you want to stay in the bed and you don't want to talk to people. That's, that's depression. A, that's a bad place to be, isn't it? It's a very p bad place to I mean, be. It really is. Uh, it, because really, you can lay down and die like that. You can really lay down and die yourself yeah. like that. Yeah, depression, is it, it robs you of your spirit, of yes, your it does. joy. Yes, it and does. Um, and you have to really fight that, you know, depression, because, well, I think it's the form of, of the devil, really, trying to rob mm -hmm. you of your joy, and you just can't, you can't have that, you know, you just, even though it's difficult when you, you lose someone, and, and uh, you're struggling to just process it. That's true. To just, you know, find a way to fill the void, mm -hmm. you know, or wanting to hear the person's voice. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times I um, have a connection. I have a connection with a departed, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, um, things that my mother said, mm -hmm. uh, I'll Sometimes I'll feel her hand on my shoulder mm -hmm. and I'll be like, I'll be driving and I'll just reach up and, you know, mm -hmm. or another good friend of mine, like Eddie, you know, uh, we both were musicians, singers, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going on, he's departed, you know, mm -hmm. but something uh, will come to my mind. His spirit is what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, you know, you may not have the body there, but the person's spirit is still there with you, you know? That's true. And that is so important. When we return, we're going to continue talking about the five stages of grief. There's more to come on the William Pace Show, coming to you mm -hmm. from the heart of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest. 
taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Krohn Conservatory. There is always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phipps, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared on the William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. Good evening, I'm William Pace, and thanks so much for tuning in the William Pace Show. My guest this evening is Carmen Jackson, and she's with the Grief to Grace program. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you. We were talking about, before the break, the five stages of grief. And so let's continue on with that. And the next stage would be I anger? talked about, no, I talked about anger first, anger, then okay. depression, denial. And uh -huh. that's the one that I stay in quite often because denial. my son, denial. Okay. Denial that it just can't be true, uh, no evidence, no closure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say that for myself because my son had been missing for 14 and a half months. Mm -hmm. And um, so I never saw his body. So there was no closure. Well, you didn't have a chance. Because, was there a funeral? There was a funeral with a body that uh, I sent the funeral home to pick up in in Michigan. Mm. Um, but I never physically saw. The last time I saw my son, he was alive. It was on Easter Sunday, mm -hmm. and he came and gave me a kiss on my cheek, mm -hmm. like he always does. And um, I mean, that's the last time I saw him. Which. Maybe God felt like I couldn't handle seeing him in a cast. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But denial is definitely a stage. And then you have the bargaining piece, which is where you wish you had a, told your loved one you loved them. Uh, or That is so <laughs> important to say, tell people, give people their, their flowers while, while they're, they're here. here. Absolutely. You know? And it's better to say it too much than not, than enough. not enough, you know? Yeah. And that's why I always say, you know, thank you so much for what you do mm -hmm. or for believing in me or for helping mm -hmm. me, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Let them know because you don't know. That's absolutely You don't know true. when that may be the last time. That's, that's true. You that's see true. someone and people take people for granted. You just well, think, we do. Mm -hmm. And you just have to tell people how much you appreciate them. You know. It's important. It's important because life is so short and we never know. Um, you re we when really we're don't gonna get know. that call for ourselves to come home with mm -hmm. the Lord. So we really don't know. Yeah. So with these five stages of grief. The last one is acceptance. Okay. <laughs> the acceptance piece is where you you finally digest that your loved one it's not coming back. And then you start to embrace some of the memories that you have of them. What were some that you embraced of your son? My son was an awesome young man. Um, just the big smile that he has on his face, mm -hmm. how much he loved his family and his friends. I still have those memories to this day. People still uh, call me from time to time talking about him. And it's been about 15 years mm -hmm. now. It's been about 15 years now, so. But you uh, know, that's his spirit. It is. His spirit is still with you. Yeah. He, he, he may not be physically here, but the things, which I know you know, there are many things that you remember, mm -hmm. you know, the, of him doing. Yeah. And those are the, you know, you know, the departed is not so departed. You know, because it's they're with you. You may not have their body here, but their spirit is here. Well, can I sh share something? Please. I don't know how long after he was gone that I had this dream, but it probably was within a year's time. Mm -hmm. And I was crying out. I had a dream of him, and we were very close to each other. And I was crying out to him, and I was telling him that I really didn't think I was going to make it without him, and I needed him mm. to come back. And he looked me in my eyes in this dream, and he told me that he was more at peace now than he had ever been in his life. Mm. 
And was that the definitive thing that you needed to be at peace to say, okay, it's okay now? Well, you know, God knows what we need, right? Ooh, absolutely. <laughs> he knows what we need. So. so that was what you needed and you finally got it. Mm -hmm. you know? And I believe that helped me to move forward with this birth in this organization, mm -hmm. Grief to Grace. And in a way, you know, it's interesting how things develop out of a loss, you know, mm -hmm. and we have to go through something. But just, you know, when I've learned, learned of this organization, this organization is going to help so many people because, you know, people are losing people all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and many of them don't have anyone to reach out. It's, if they have their church, that's great. That's a great place of support. But if you're not connected with a church, you have to have some place to, to, to reach out. So this is a really good ministry that you're doing it really is and it's going to touch the lives of many people here um i want to talk about some of your board members and in the next segment we're going to be talking with one of them mm -hmm. and uh, the former mayor of dayton gary lysel mm -hmm. so you'll definitely want to stay with us right to the end of this program and uh, but tell us about some of the other board members We've had uh, several board members over the years because we've been around now since 2009, which is 13 years this month, and we've had several board members. We've had board members from uh, the Sisters of Precious Blood. We've had board members, uh, Gary Lysel, as you mm -hmm. said. We've had good people that really believe in this organization and know the need for this organization. And this is truly why we've been able to still maintain and function and operate mm -hmm. after 13 years. When the pandemic came, of course, that shut down a lot. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter concerning a support group. It could be two or three people in a support group meeting. And you'll leave there feeling some healing before you leave simply because you're with someone mm -hmm. that truly understands the roller coaster that comes with grief and also the healing that comes with mm -hmm. it. And the process, it's mm -hmm. a process. And so no one never knows how long it, it, would, it would take to grieve, but we know that we it can heal. With it each is. person, you know. It is. You just, it's, it's you, first of all, you just have to, some people do not grieve, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then they finally break down. I guess they're trying to be Absolutely. so strong to just get through it, you know, because there's, you know, a funeral or mm -hmm. a wake or something, you know, and you people coming and and you're just trying to be strong. But then I, after that, I think that's when it really hits hard, doesn't it? Well, it uh, it can be like the waves in an ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, you just need to learn how to swim because you never know when a wave is going to come when it comes to grief, because when you've lost a piece of your heart no matter if it's a husband, a child, a sister, a mother, a father, or just a good friend. It's a lot of pain with that because you spend years with these people. They're at the forefront of your heart. Mm. And so when they're gone, um, there's a lot of pain with that. And there'll be good days and there'll be good bad days, and, you know. And avoid, I keep, you know. And avoid. You know, an empty yeah. place, you know. There's more to come on the William Pace Show. Stay with us. The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Krohn Conservatory. There's always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phipps, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared on The William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present The William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. Good evening. Thanks so much for tuning in The William Pace Show. This evening, my guests are Carmen Jackson 
and the former mayor of Dayton, Gary Lysol. Thank you so much for being on the program tonight. Thanks for having me back. Now, I understand that you are a board member mm -hmm. of Grief to Grace. Correct. I, I believe I've been on that board eight, eight or nine years. Maybe longer. This point. And then, well, um, I'll give you a little story. Carmen came to my office when I was mayor in 2010, mm -hmm. and she wanted a proclamation for a guest that she had invited for one of her functions. And uh, every time she had a function, she'd call my office, and my former aide, Jason, would schedule me to attend. So mm -hmm. I've been pretty much at almost all of her early, mm -hmm. her marches, her cookouts, and everything that mm -hmm. she was doing. Um, and then finally, I think when the mayor thing was over, she asked me to be on the board. Wonderful. What has been the biggest challenge since you've been on the board? Well, we keeping good board members. Mm -hmm. um, you know, life happens, and so people, mm -hmm. you know, wander off, and, and, and other things become more important. But um, if there's anybody out there that would like to be on a board of a nonprofit, um, please call Carmen because mm -hmm. we, we could use about at least three more board okay. members, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so. Uh, that. And many times a board member is sort of like um, one of the um, employees of the organization or they sometimes wear some of the hats of the well, people. Well, we're volunteers. We're not paid. It's a nonprofit. Yes. Um, but we only have to meet four times a year. You know, okay. We, that's what we're, we're so we're it's not a big to. time commitment. No, yeah, so. um, but it, w w what I like to see is people who are part of the support group. We groom them to become board members. I think that's a good right. idea right. because mm -hmm. they they have the four one one. They know right. what's what's involved. And a, another thing that we'd like to do going forward is we we'd like to grow the organization. Currently, um, we meet the second Tuesday of the month at the Northwest library here in Dayton, okay. in Philadelphia and Hillcrest, right? Yeah, um, say that once again for the viewers out there, uh, okay, the address, the, yeah, and we'll also put it on the screen too. The second Tuesday of every month at the Northwest branch of the Montgomery County Library, which is at the corner of Hillcrest and Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. At 6 p.m. 6 p.m., mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Um, please be, feel free to come and, and, and attend. They have, mm -hmm. they have a room that they go into, and they're there for about an hour, hour mm -hmm. and a half, mm -hmm. um, sharing, sharing stories. Um, we'd like to grow that. We'd like to get another group maybe meeting the third Tuesday or Thursday or whatever at the downtown library. Oh, okay. And then, and then we'd like to satellite that and maybe go into the Kettering library. Mm -hmm. So and there's a group throughout the county or right. that's uh, different branches mm -hmm. yeah. of, right. of the... Right, and so Carmen doesn't have to be at all of them. This is right. the idea is that people mm -hmm. who, have, who are regularly attending the support group um, and know the agenda that they run by mm -hmm. and everything can uh, help a, a greater audience. I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is bigger than just people who've lost people to violence. I mean, with the the opioid epidemic and stuff like that. I mean, there there is definitely uh, a lot of grief out there. And and when Carmen started, she used to meet at the church, and I kind of pushed them to move to a library because a lot of times when people lose someone, they're they're angry at God. Yep. And they don't want to go to a church for a support mm -hmm. group. So we had to look for another public space to move it to. And it's been successful at the Northwest Library. Well, I think having different locations make it more uh, accessible for people to get there. Convenience. Right? Yes, convenient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that they would have a sense of support in their own neighborhood mm -hmm. where right. the loss is is there. Um, what are some of the other needs of the organization? One, one, I would like to say one of the goals for Grief to Grace has been all along is to have a collaborative group of people to get together so that this organization can be provided throughout the entire community. Mm -hmm. As Gary was saying, not just where we're located at now, but the goal has been all along is for this to expand because it's needed everywhere and it's needed for all of the reasons we've talked about since we've been sitting here. Mm -hmm. um, so we can use <laughs> a few dollars every now and then, but we... And if someone would like to donate 
They can call the number on the screen? Yes, they can. And okay. any donations would be made out to Grief to Grace. Okay. There will never be a donation that a check would be made out to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> never. Okay. Or anyone on the board or anybody okay. that's a member of the organization. And if it's cash, then a receipt will be given for that cash. Okay. But um, we've been down since the pandemic, and we really, really want to get started again. And we mm. have been really successful since May of this year at the library. Uh, but one of the goals we want to do is we really want to be able to expand this and just provide snacks and those kind of things. We're planning to get back into um, one of our biggest fundraisers, which is a women's seminar we have every mm. year, we had every year before the pandemic. Tell us a little bit about that seminar. Uh, the women's seminar is usually broke up into four segments and each segment we talk about not grief, just every life challenges. And for example, one of our topics may be what's behind the mass? What's mm. behind the mass of a woman, <laughs> you know? Mm. And we have a group of people and we've always, we've never had less than 70 women at this uh, seminar. And so you have at least 10 or 15 women in each session per hour. And it's really been awesome, it, it was successful. Uh, we managed to raise about a thousand dollars at each one we wow. had per year and that carried us over it enabled us to be able to pay for our board's uh, insurance that we have to have because we're mm -hmm. an organization um so we're planning on having it again next april starting Wonderful. it back up lastly for the viewers listening uh who may at this very moment have lost someone, what words of comfort would you offer to them? I would share with anyone who has lost a loved one to uh, be willing to um, allow someone to help you. Support groups are nice, uh, uh, counseling is good as well, mm -hmm. but you know it's a lot to endure on, on your own. And for me, uh, helping others help me. So anytime anyone is going through anything, the best way to deal with that is to help someone else because it helps to ease our own personal pain. So I would say reach out, uh, be willing to come out of your comfort zone and allow yourself to allow someone else to uh, feel your pain and support you in your pain because it's really necessary for all of us to heal. Thank you so much for being on the program tonight. Carmen Jackson, Thank Gary you. Lysol. There's more to come on the William Pace Show, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. The William Pace Show on CATV.